everyone. If you're lucky enough to have a piece of prime steak, I'm going to show you the best possible way that you could cook it. Um, but pretty much with any recipe that you ever do, there's three things you want to consider. You want to make sure that you have the right ingredients. You want to make sure that you have the right equipment. And you want to make sure that you have the right technique. Now today, I absolutely have the right ingredients. This is a USDA prime boneless ribeye. Beautifully, beautifully cut. Probably about two inches thick maybe there. Really, really nice piece of meat. But when you're dealing with a really thick cut like that, and one that is so expensive and so delicious like prime meat, then you're gonna really wanna make sure that you have the right equipment and you use the right technique. Now, a word about equipment today. I have cast iron skillet here. Very important because it is something that can get really super duper hot. I got my cast iron skillets from my grandmother, so I'm very, very proud of them. I have one here, but I have one that's heating on the stove. So when you get this beautiful piece of meat, first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna bring it home. And because it's so thick, I'm gonna want it to come up to room temperature. I've had this piece sitting out for about an hour now, so it'll come to room temperature and it'll cook that much more evenly. Now to prepare this for cooking, simple, simple, simple. I'm gonna take a little bit of oil. If you are very, very dogmatic about paleo cooking, you would use like a coconut oil or something like that. I'm actually using vegetable oil. One of my tips, I don't really want to have a ton of oil. I'm just going to use the same tray that the meat came in. I'm going to pour a little oil there. So when I set the meat back down in this tray while I'm seasoning it, it'll also get just a light coating of oil. You want to use something that's going to have a high smoke point. Speaking of smoking, I'm already smoking over here on my burner. Uh, but you also want to, you know, consider flavor, consider what type of oil that you just like. I'm turning on the burner here because this method is going to create a ton of smoke. In fact, my smoke alarm might go off at any time, so uh, bear with me. Okay, so I've got my meat. i got my little tray with some, some oil in it. I'm going to treat this very respectfully and very simply. Pepper and salt. However, if you have access to it, this product, Worcestershire pepper, is the bomb for red meat. Now, when I say I'm going to season this heavily, I am not even joking to you. Uh, I'm going to pull the camera over here so you can see what I do to it. You can almost never over season red meat, so you're going to use a fairly heavy hand. Seasonings are simple, like I said, but they're, they're um, you want it to be bold to stand up to this meat. A lot of salt. Don't worry about the salt in your, in your diet, like from the stuff that you're cooking at home, because honest to goodness, the salt that you're putting in your food, that you're cooking yourself, is such a small part of the salt that you're actually consuming. Most of the salt that comes from, in our American diet, are coming from processed foods that are crazy high in salt and sugar. So like I said, I am really dowsing, dowsing this meat. You can get it on all sides. I don't want to forget my Worcestershire pepper. Such a cool thing. I've never seen it before. I found it in the Rouse's store here in New Orleans. But since I've fallen in love with it, I've also recommended it to other people. And apparently, you can get it on eBay and Amazon. So it's another route for you. Now, while I've got the camera, I'm going to bring it over here. Another word about equipment. I don't know what BTU my stove is. I can tell you this son of a gun gets super duper hot. I've had this cast iron skillet sitting on a high flame for probably about seven minutes now, and it is hot, it's smoking. Uh, that's what I want though. Now, at this point, you can also turn on your oven to about 350, because that's how we're going to um, finish this steak after we sear it. Okay, so got my steak, it's going in the pan, it's gonna make a shit ton of noise. Right -o. So I'm gonna let this sit here under high heat or, I don't know, until a really beautiful, super duper crust develops. That's what I want to see. I want it to be almost to the point of burning. I want it to really get that caramelization effect, that beautiful crust. So I'm going to pause the video. I'll come back to it in a minute and show you what we're looking for. My hands are getting burned. I can't hold it there. Okay, so it's time to flip it over. Let me show you what we're looking for. 
Come over, bring the camera over here. Look at this crust that we built up there. That's what we want. We want it to be nice and dark and, and brown and tasty. That's where all the flavor is. So that took about, you can, that took about, about seven or eight minutes to get that crust on there. Maybe not as long as that, but you want to definitely leave it there until that develops. I'm going to not only sear this on the either side of the steak, I'm also going to take it, flip it up like this and hold it with my tongs so I can get a crust developed on the edges as well. Okay, so while I'm doing that, it's going to take, eh, take a little bit of time. We're going to take another break and then I'll show you what to do when you finish searing this on all sides. including the edges, you're going to pop it into an oven at about 350 degrees so that it's finished cooking. Right now, I can tell by the way this steak feels that it's super, super rare. I don't want it to get even to medium. I don't want it to stay around medium rare, but it's so thick that this direct cooking method is not going to get it cooked all the way through or get it even warmed all the way through. So that's why we're going to finish it in that moderate oven. Some of this is, is uh, just trial and you haven't done it a long time. If you need to, you can certainly use a meat thermometer to make sure that you get this steak to the doneness that you want it. You do not want to overcook a beautiful piece of meat like this. But after you put a million steaks in your life, you'll come to where you can kind of just tell by the feel of it about where you want it to be. So we're in here, come take a look. We also have a pork roast in there because we eat a lot of meat. Um, so bye-bye. We'll come back and see what the finished product looks like. It's been about 10, maybe 12 minutes. I can tell just by the feel of this steak that it's about where I want it to be. Keep in mind that your steak is going to get a little more done while it rests. And you absolutely want it to rest. For a steak this this thick, this size, I would say let it rest at least 10 minutes to let those juices redistribute. And so it'll be perfectly juicy and done like you want it to when you cut it. <clears throat> so I'm just going to kind of sit this over here to be, be getting happy, to quote Emerald. Okay, we've let the steak rest for about 10 minutes and we're about to have the moment of truth to cut into it. There we go. And doesn't that look delicious? A beautiful medium rare steak. All right. So the only problem we have now is one steak and four people. We'll try not to fight it out. Thanks, guys. Hope you enjoyed it.